And I'll hear from Vermillion Lloyd Minster. Well, Madam Chair, um, I, I see this afternoon's proceedings as being uh, a tremendous lost opportunity. Uh, and it disappoints me because really uh, what we wanted uh, this afternoon to have is have a discussion about a principle that as the Honourable Member of Grayton Valley Devon has articulated has long been something that has guided education in this province and that is parental choice. And, um, and there is concern since the election of this government on the part of many parents across our province that, uh, that in some ways those choice or that ability to choose would in some ways be eroded. Now the Education Minister, to his credit, has stated in question period that that is not his intent and that he has said not equivocally in terms of going forward, but he has certainly said for the time being that those choices would still be made available. But for parents across the province, the ability to have that choice is something that they need to have affirmed to them. And this motion gave government, gave government members the opportunity to do that. And in fact, because it's a private member's motion and because it's a free vote, if there are some members of government caucus who don't agree with the statement, they could vote against the motion. And in fact, I think that given the diversity of the province of Alberta, there would be some who would applaud them on making that decision to vote against the motion because they have a fundamental uh, disagreement with the, with the notion of parental choice. But I will tell you on behalf of parents who make choices that are alternate to public education, that we, we make them with the greatest of care, Madam Speaker, and I can assure you that, and that we are concerned that members of this government do not necessarily honour that ability to make that choice. Now, I spoke out in this legislature in October of 2012, and I'm quoting here from Hansard, because the, at that time, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Highlands Norwood, when he was speaking to Government Bill 3, and it was talking, uh, we were speaking that night about choice in education, and I'm going to quote, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit in his quote because what we were talking about is we were talking about some of the changes that had been made when Bill 3, the Education Act, was reintroduced. And the Honourable Member uh, said, and I quote, and he's referring to basically some of the information we received from groups like uh, charter school parents and homeschool parents. And, the, and the, um, the Honourable Member said, I think it's deplorable. I think it's pandering to fringe groups in our education system and the vast majority of students who participate in the public school system will suffer as a result." End of quote. And specifically, just to get the full context of the debate, he was referring to homeschoolers. And I saw it as recently as Monday night at the Alberta School Boards Association when I had a school board trustee come up to me and say, you know what the problem with our public school system is? It's those homeschoolers. It's those homeschoolers, it's those parents that make decisions to homeschool their kids. And I looked at that trustee and I said, well, you probably picked the wrong guy to say that to. <laughs> because my wife and I were blessed with two sons and they were homeschooled K to 12. <laughs> and uh, the one is currently completing a master's degree in theology, having finished a Bachelor of Arts degree in Applied Arts and Philosophy. The other one is, has a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Calgary. I think they've turned out okay. And we made those choices, Madam Speaker, specifically because a public school teacher, when my wife told that public school teacher, who was a friend of ours, that our oldest son had taught himself to read and he was reading at a grade nine level by the time he got to the age of three, that public school teacher told my wife you know, I used to really enjoy teaching students like Roland, our oldest son, but now they're just a problem. That's what we were told, that our son, if he went to public school, would be a problem. A problem in the class of a teacher whom we respected for her ability and her passion for teaching. And so after that, after many tears were shed, my wife and I made the decision that we would homeschool our children. 
And there have been times where we wondered if that was the right decision, but we made that decision. My problem with this amendment, Madam Speaker, is that I have a problem with the phrase commitment to allowing parents the choice for their children, and then goes through including home charter private educations, in such instances where they offer alternatives not available in the public system. Parental choice becomes conditional. It becomes conditional upon proving, and I'm not sure to whom or how, that those alternatives are not available in the public system. So what would we have had to do, I ask? Would we have had to subpoena that teacher to appear in front of some sort of tribunal in order to get permission to homeschool our sons? That's what we were told. You may not want to believe that. That's fine. That's your prerogative. But my wife and I were told that our gifted son would be a problem in public school. So we chose an alternative. We didn't want to create a problem for a teacher or for a group of students. And we homeschooled that child. And we homeschooled both of our sons. And throughout, it was not just our choice as parents. It was their choice. Every year, we sat down with them and said, do you want to continue on this path of homeschooling or do you want to attend public school? That option is available to you. And every single year, they chose to be homeschooled. That choice is available in Alberta. That choice is funded in Alberta. Alberta and British Columbia are the only two provinces that actually fund homeschooling. And in some, Amer in some European countries, it's illegal. It's illegal to homeschool in Germany. It's illegal to homeschool in Sweden. And it's stunning to me that this amendment would move us closer to a situation where you have to prove to someone, we don't know who, we don't know how, but you'd have to prove that a certain course or type of education is not available in the public system. That's what the amendment says. So instead of having a debate as the original motion would have had, talking specifically about affirming parental choice and all of the variety of choice, and allowing honourable members to speak to that, either in for, in favour, or opposed. That's what private members' motions are for. It's a free vote. You can vote opposite to the person next speak, uh, sitting next to you. That's okay. That's fine. But instead of having that, we have this amendment that fundamentally changes this motion because now it makes parental choice conditional. It makes parental choice only an option where the parents can prove that the choice they want to make is not available in the public system. Madam Speaker, that fundamentally changes what we're talking about here, and I think, quite frankly, it sends a shiver down the spine of every parent in this province who chooses to educate their children in a manner that is not in keeping with what is preferred by that side of the House. And, Madam Speaker, that indeed is a sad day for this province. If parental choice is removed from the parents of Alberta, if the opportunity guaranteed by the United Nations that parents shall be the primary deciders of how their children shall be educated, and removing it from parents and handing it over to the state, handing it over to somebody who decides whether the conditions in this amendment are in fact being satisfied, that will send a shiver down the spine of every homeschool parent, charter school parent, private school parent in the province. And it didn't have to be that way. We could have debated the original motion, and we could have had a split in, in all caucuses for that matter, because some perhaps wouldn't have uh, uh, supported the motion in either caucus, in all the caucuses. But instead, we have this. We have this amendment that has fundamentally changed it and has fundamentally changed it into a situation where parents will only have the opportunity to choose these non-approved courses, these non-approved streams of education that have always been available purely on the choice of the parent, because they now have to prove that that's not available in the public education system. Uh, Madam Speaker, that's a sad 
sad statement. And I can only think that observers of this debate today will be very disappointed in that.